So we had a great introduction on aging, healthy aging, happy aging. But the introduction of my talk was somehow different. It is the pessimistic part of it. So I just present like a few good things, so, but you know it's going bad. The bad thing of aging is that we basically end up alone, like this woman. The great thing is that we are getting old, all of us. So it's going to be a big party. It's going to be all of us old. It's going to be fun. So this graph is not about global warming. It's about the percentage of people older than 60 years old in the world. We are somehow in the middle of that graph, and we're going to double, triple the number of people over 60. And if we take a look at that uh, United Nations report, an, an, an interesting sentence is this one. What does it say? The older population is itself aging. Old people, as we know them, they're getting older. They don't die. So this is a good part of it. We're going to be many. It's going to be fun. We can play dices together. We can talk about grandchild. And uh, the bad part of it is that maybe we can't be that old. Maybe our body can be that old. Maybe our bones cannot support so many years. So if we take another look at statistics, only in the US this year, one million bone grafting procedures were performed. OK, that's a number. But 30% of increase per year, 130,000 patients more per year. Old people getting bone grafting procedures. So the focus of this talk is to send a message. We need bone regeneration, but we need it now. We need it today. So when I generally present this, they tell me, hey, this is good, but I broke my leg last year and they didn't regenerate any bone in me. They sent me home two months, and I could walk again. So where's the bone regeneration? So I thought I could do like a bit more realistic. So we work in a biomaterials lab. So I brought some uh, samples from the lab so we can understand what is bone regeneration. So we'll take a look at the bone basics. So I had a great assistant here. He's not nervous. Oh. OK, this is a car accident. So we basically have a bone fracture here. So this is not a human bone. You can. So the game here is to explain you when do we need bone regeneration. Well, when the problem is something like this, that the broken part is very small, we don't need to do nothing. You immobilize, you go to the medic, and you see Dr. House, and you go back home, and everything is OK. But when the problem is something like this, that the bone defect is too big, we have a space to fill, and the body is not able to regenerate it by itself. So we don't do nothing. Our story starts here. What do we put in here in the middle? Can somebody answer this? What do we put here in the middle to regenerate the bone? So, we're going to connect a bit to the real world and take a look. What do we put in there? Right now, something like this. Little granules of bovine bone. That bone. Co-bone. So they put it in the bone defect and wait for it to regenerate or to generate something that is, looks like bone, that is good enough for you to walk again. But before talking in a, in a coffee break, they said, hey, you're talking about bone. Are you talking about stem cells therapy? Are you talking about this? It's, it's very promising, no? Yes, there are new solutions, crazy solutions, new surgeries like Molly Stevens' talk. They generate bone in a tibia, take it from the tibia and place it where you need it. They have stem cell therapies. They generate bone in a lab and implant it in your body when you need it. But according to this graph, it is highly technological. This is good, but it is very expensive. And this is not good for you. OK? So the focus of this talk and the objective, the message I want you to take back home, is that we are looking at solutions that look like this, technological solutions, but not that expensive. And more importantly, applicable solutions, something that can actually get to the hospitals and to the patients, something that can 
be a real reality, not only a dream. Because a dream is a dream because it's not real. Okay? So, from a researcher point of view, that's what I did last year. That's what I, that's what I keep doing. I do research. What we see is that life is not about the 3D simulation of bone. And life is not about cells. Life is not about biology, stem cells, osteoclasts, osteoblasts. It's about you and I needing a dental implant in a car accident with a bone fracture, needing bone regeneration. But it's a bit more. It's about the surgeon doing his job. We design biomaterials, but we design tools for this person to place into you. He has to use it. There's also a healthcare system that has to be sustainable. You want to be reimbursed with this material. You want it to work. You want it to be not that expensive. And finally, companies. Companies are the bridge between the research and the client, the research and the hospitals. And finally, and I think this is the most important thing, it's about the patient's bank account. How much would you pay for your bones? 100 euros? 1,000 euros? 30,000 euros? How much? So, at that moment, we stopped being researchers, only researchers, and say, what is the challenge? Make a solution that can actually make it to the patient. And we thought, OK, this is as simple as this. We do something cheap that works more or less. OK, it works not that well, but it's cheap. Or we do something very expensive, and it works crazy. We get a clean bone. But this lasts like three or four weeks, and we discovered that it was not about this. It was about four criteria. And sadly, the first one was the price. It has to be cheap. If it is not cheap, it's not applicable. The second one is that it actually has to work. The surgery has to be a success. You need a bone to walk. You need a bone to place a dental implant in your mouth. You need a bone for your hip or for your grandmother's hip. And I, I just repeated that what we do are tools for the surgeons. And an easy tool is a good tool. It has to be easy to use. And finally, it has to be safe. You don't want to come back from the hospital with a bone infection. Me neither. No one. And the first one to limit and to need this safety is the surgeon. You get a bone infection, maybe you get antibiotics, antibiotics and it's okay. But the surgeon would not have surgeries anymore. He's off. He can go home. So the funny part of the talk is here. We, as researchers, came back to the lab and say, OK, we have a lot of work here. We have 15 years of research on bone grafting. But we needed to look for a solution in our own work, in our own research lab. So research is our, is our job. So we, we just took a look, opened all the papers, all the folders, and say, hey, took all the materials, and say, what, what's applicable in here? Well, in 15 years of the research, there must be something. And in theory, what we do is for you. But we found only two solutions that could get to you, basically get to us too. So the first one was very easy. You recognize the picture from before. Little pellets of bone. But the difference is, it is not made of that bone. It is not bovine bone. It is synthetic. It is made from chemicals. Sounds bad. It is made from phosphates from Morocco. It is made from rocks. And it is totally safe. No risk of disease transmission, for instance. And as an off comment, we don't need to kill cows. That's a good point. Well, I like barbecues, but not that much. And uh, we made a little plus. We made that roughness on it, so it would actually interact with the body. We would have a communication between the material and the body. And I said it before, it has to be cost effective. So with this technology and doing some numbers that we're not business people, but we can do some numbers. And uh, by imagining a company, by building a company, we came up with a conclusion that this could be sold 25 euros a doses. What is a doses? It's 0.5 cc. What is 0.5 cc? The tip of your finger. The tip of your finger would cost 25 euros with this technology, but it is sold 125. When you go to the dentist, you're paying this 125 if your dentist is friendly. 
So this was a very classic solution. We do the gold standard, we make it safe and a bit cheaper. But the philosophy of the research has always been to mimic the bone. And maybe there's one thing you don't know about the bone, is that uh, I'll take it without gloves because in the end it's a piece of ham. But this, this, this bone, the inner part of the bone, is 80% of nothing. It is 80% porous, to use technical terms. So basically, when you take a bone, you have 80% of nothing in your hands and 20% of bone. So to actually mimic the bone, we needed the composition of the bone. That was easy because it was the, the previous solution. But we needed some void in it. We needed 80% of nothing in our solution. But this was good news because we had 80% of the job done. It was good. But the bad news is that the 20% of it was hard to get. So the second big uh, philosophy in the research group is to take coffee. And taking coffee first maintains your wake, it's very important, and it allows you to actually communicate. Because if you research alone, you go nowhere. When you communicate, you just say, hey, I took a cappuccino, see, look at my foam. Hey, I took a chocolate mousse. And I took some uh, green desert, I don't really know what it is. <laughs> but the few of them are made out of, of a foam. These are foams. So what's a foam? What is the sensation you get in your mouth when you drink or eat, I don't even know, the foam of the cappuccino? You do like, there's nothing. 80% of nothing. So you see me. What we did was a material to foam a bone substitute. So we took something that existed, the calcium phosphate salmon, to make it real, and we made a foam out of it. This is what you see, a little cube of five millimeters of side, and this is full of nothing, and it is perfectly 80% porosity. But um, the important part of it is that it looks like the bone. So I'd like to apologize because I forgot which uh, one is the material and which one is the bone in this one. I think maybe you can help me on this one. Who thinks the bone is on the right? Who thinks the bone is on the left? So we did a good job. I won't tell you where the bone is, but the point is one is the bone and one is the material. So the important here is that you see it's very important to mimic the bone. So what is this, that piece of wall on that PowerPoint? What is this? This is the philosophy of the approach of today. We fill a bone defect. What are we trying to do here? We're trying to regenerate a bone defect. What is the difference? In one case, we fill the cavity with a material whose main activity is to fill it. What we do is to put a scaffold in it, to put a temporary tool so that it helps the bone regenerate itself. What if I imagine I'm a bone cell and I meet the material we've just seen before, that foam. I go on the morning, I'm going to work in my bone, I get there, and as a good bone cell, what I do is to constantly eat the bone and regenerate new bone. So I go at once, I eat the bone and I regenerate bone. What if I meet something that looks like, looks like, like bone? Well, I'm a bone cell, so I'm going to eat it and regenerate it. What does that mean from our point of view? We degrade the material and replace it with our own bone. Your bone, my bone. So what's the message in here? And I'd like to meet Arian's talk now, that we're getting old, and that's a fact, that is statistics, and statistics almost never lie. And the important part here is that you never stop moving. You never stop walking, walking in the park, walking with your dog, maybe running, maybe riding your bicycles, maybe doing some extreme sports, base jumping, maybe going on the boat. But the message is that you need to know that you can safely break your bones. Thank you. <laughs>